June 24th, 1996. And we're just in West Bay in the Cape Breton uh, Redor Lake uh, system. Uh, we're just off Calf Island in West Bay. And uh, we've been flying at about 300 to 400 feet at about 60 uh, knots. But we're coming up on uh, Calf Island now. Cow Island just in behind. Very nice drumlinoid topography. We're flying 400 feet and the time is uh, 11.56. See the, uh, the shoreline there was erosional uh, cliff in the back shore. Uh, sand up top of boulder at the foreshore, and then the near shore is scattered with lobster traps. It's very coarse substrate. We're going to go across right over to uh, the last island. You're looking at Clark Island right now, and then we'll go across to the next island over. See, each one of these have a nice uh, flanking barrier attaching the two headlands. around the farthest island out, uh, then back towards uh, Clark Island. There you get a good view of the, uh, it's actually a submerged spit that sticks out off the end of the island. Uh, there's a very small uh, emerged or exposed spit. There you can see the difference in the, the, the sediment. It's more sandy, a pe fine pebble on the uh, exposed part, and then the near shore is more of a cobble boulder. Cutting across over to uh, Clark Island, the island with the double uh, barrier. You can see that the back shore has some dune grass, uh, foreshore is sand, much sandier on that uh, small barrier, and more sand just offshore. Coming across the Rook Island, uh, two parts to it, almost three parts uh, small islands. Again, uh, very long submerged uh, spits off of each end of the island. The uh, back shore is partially stabilized, cliff, uh, bank, uh, foreshore, uh, pretty well developed, uh, pretty well uh, sorted sediment, sand and pebble especially at the ends here by the spit. And then uh, at the end again, you get this submerged spit extending offshore. The area that you see in the water is sort of looks like sand, some vegetation, but a lot of scattered boulders and cobbles. We'll go in and around Cow Island a bit, and uh, the time is uh, 11.59. Again, what you're seeing is uh, small drumlins joined by a, uh, uh, small barriers, more sandy. And as we come around on McRae Island, you can see a fringing shore, low line, and there's a bit of a wetland right in the foreground here at the end of this spit on McRae Island. Then we'll come across uh, Low Island and then back to the main shore. Just going across Low Island, it's, uh, it's uh, 1,200 hours. And again, you can see the scattered, scattered garlands, or uh, not really garlands, but scattered boulders in the near shore with vegetation on them. 
and we get a good view looking down West Bay at the uh, Grambin Islands and uh, it's very picturesque. Uh, it's a nice sunny day today, not too much wind. We're just coming around to the main shore now. We'll pick up uh, some of that quarry in the George Mountain, George Mountain port sites. And as we pick up the main shore again uh, at around uh, 350 feet, um, we're back into a fringing shore. A uh, bit of a foreland uh, here is very sandy some uh, recurves and the trees are on the old ridges then the cottage just passed it had a lot of uh, riprap in front of it as are some of these uh, there's a lot of boulders been rearranged in the near shore the elevation in the back shore is over 500 feet uh, 150 meters and we'll be coming up on the marble, marble mountain soon up on Marble Mountain. Uh, it used to be a very large uh, quarry in 1869 to 1921. They used to ship the, uh, the marble out. In fact, they also used to ship out the, uh, the lime uh, to PEI for soils. Um, and you can see quite a big scarp. If uh, you look up into the back shore, you'll be seeing a large scarp where the quarry was. And uh, some of the slag uh, from the marble uh, works is in the uh, foreground in a minute uh, just coming up with you on the shore uh, You can see the wharf structures and now we're just getting into the area of the quarry that uh, is some of the waste material from it uh, the uh, abandoned uh, Quarrying works and the waste slag gives it a uh, poorly stabilized material sandy and heavily and the uh, near shore is uh, much more uh, light colored uh, it's because we're into these uh, George River quartzites. We're going down into uh, McDonald's Cove. The time is uh, 12.03. And again, you can see very nice white color to these uh, fine pebbles, fine pebble and sand material. It's because we're into the quartzites, uh, the local material. Here we get a very nice uh, recurve spit into the bay. There you get a good view of the spit. Coming around the, the McDonald Cove. The time is uh, 12.04. And there you get a good view of the, uh, the head of the cove. It's sort of wetland uh, vegetation, uh, cobble boulder, uh, some cobble boulder, uh, some anchorages offshore, but a lot of uh, vegetation at the uh, head of the bay. going along McMillan's Cove. It's a very shallow area, especially at the entrance way, although it looks like a boat could get through the channel. Uh, looking down in the water, it uh, appears to be less boulders, uh, more sand. It's quite well vegetated. Uh, there's a wharf and new construction at the head. We're going across the highway now, for the road that goes down by uh, George Island. And we're just coming across to the main shore and then we'll go back down and in. 
We're just actually going over Robert Island. Again, it has a nice uh, a recurve spit, uh, which actually joined a small inlet in the middle of it. You can just see it there. And again, the sediment offshore is a fair bit of boulder, cobble material with sand. Now we'll circle back. Now we're heading back up uh, McMillan's Cove. Then into McDonald Cove. Shoreline along here is a little bit hard to see, but there's very little beach. Uh, it's vegetated back shore, uh, fairly well stabilized. And the near shore is a uh, heterogeneous uh, material. There's some dune grass uh, where it gets a little bit sandier on some of the uh, um, small forelands. We're in the McDonald uh, Cove now. The time is uh, 12.06. As we come out of uh, McDonald Point, uh, the shoreline is a uh, very heterogeneous uh, sand cobble boulder. And uh, you can see across uh, over to the other uh, headland. Uh, again, uh, very little relief though, but uh, mixed sediment beaches. Coming across over to Cameron Island, uh, we're flying at around 300 feet at about 70 knots. We're just picking up the uh, main Cameron Island now. It's again a, a collection of small um, hills or drumlins joined by barriers. There at this end, you can see the long uh, flanking barrier coming off the um, tumble off the end of the, the island. Uh, dune vegetation in the back shore, sandy. The beach is sand, cobble, and pebble, and then you've got that uh, lag, uh, pebble cobble in the uh, near shore. Coming along the outer part of Cameron Island, you will see there's several uh, small barriers linking different parts of the island. And in fact, you'll be coming up uh, to George Island. There's a light uh, joining it. There's a lighthouse as well. Uh, there you can see one of the small barriers, dune grass in the back shore, uh, pebble uh, storm ridge, sandy lower foreshore, and a mixture of sediment in the near shore. If you come around Cameron Island, there's a lighthouse uh, right on the next corner. There you can see a much uh, higher uh, uh, cliff, probably 15 uh, meters, uh, that reddish till again, and then the small light. Uh, I don't know if this is called the George Island light or not, but uh, it's on Cameron Island, so I guess not. It's a very beautiful little crossing as we go across over to George Island. Again, this side of the Drumlands, more erosional, poorly stabilized cliffs uh, flanked by barriers and there's a large uh, net uh, going across uh, to George Island, Cameron Island. Um, several of them actually, uh, not quite sure uh, what they're uh, trapping, uh, but there's two or three of them along the uh, shore, uh, perpendicular to the shore. Very number of lobster traps uh, along George Island as well. Uh, here's again a case where we've got on this end of the Drumlin a uh, higher scarp uh, cliff, 10 to 15 meters, not very well stabilized, very poorly developed beach of uh, cobble, boulder, pebble. We're going down into McKinnon. Kenzie's Cove and behind George's Island. 
Again, there's some lobster traps along this side of the island. Uh, uh, it looks to be a little bit more sandy, although there's still a fair number of cobbles pulled. Just cutting across the, uh, the head of Mackenzie's Cove. Just circling um, over over to Mackenzie's Point, and we're going to just have another look at Mackenzie's uh, Cove. Uh, you can see there uh, and we're in the back uh, part, and it's coming back out on the outer shore now. Uh, we'll pick it up again, and there you can see the sediment. The light-colored area is sand and pebble, mostly pebble. And uh, the near shore is a pebble cobble and boulder uh, lag along the outer shore. We'll go out around Robert Island and then back, so you will get a great view of the inner shore, but it's, it's a partially stabilized cliff, uh, pretty developed beach until you get to that boat. And then Robert Island is a typical sort of uh, higher scarp on the outer shore with uh, boulder cobble leg, uh, more lobster traps as well. Our time is 12.11. We're flying at uh, around 400 feet and uh, 60 uh, knots. It's June 24th, 1996 and we're in West Bay, uh, Cape Breton in the Bredore Lakes. Uh, we just made a sharp turn there. We're getting in there, still in the George River port sites, uh, and you can see a lot of the boulders are the light colored. Uh, the relief in the back shore are up to 76 meters, uh, pretty close to the road there. And uh, the back shore has more relief as well. We'll be going in the Little Harbor where the, uh, the mineral deposits or the, uh, the geology changes to Windsor Group again, back in the sandstones and limestones. The entrance to Little Harbor has two uh, barrier beaches or flanking spits at the entranceway. You're just seeing one in the uh, picture now. It has dune grass on the back shore, mostly a pebble material for the foreshore, but there is sand. And then uh, in the near shore, you're into the cobble boulder. The little harbor took a picture of the entranceway. Uh, the shore in here, there's some wetland at the head of each one of the little arms of the uh, little harbor. Uh, very little beach development. It's mostly uh, low uh, scarp uh, or cliff, uh, dead debris of trees, fallen trees and so on. Sort of a mixture of sand and pebble uh, beaches. There's the odd little barrier with dune grass and the near shore is uh, mostly a sand and pebble with uh, that cobble leg again. Very little development along the inner part of this bay or harbor. Coming out to the outer harbor, again you're starting to see that uh, shallow zone in the water just below us. It looks to be mostly sand with a cobble cover. Uh, there's more grass uh, vegetation along this part of the beach. Uh, tree vegetated, poorly developed beach. And again we're coming out and you'll catch sight of the other small spit at the uh, entrance of the little harbor. The time is 12.14, uh, just leaving Little Harbor. We'll head towards the Militia Point. They actually uh, 
along this shore and getting into what looks to be almost like a watchtower, but it's just somebody's building, I guess, is coming up. Uh, this part of the outer shore has some uh, small barriers, very well vegetated in the water and behind, very stagnant water. Um, the back shore, again, is a partially stabilized uh, reddish-brown till material uh, mapped by Grant. Uh, the beach itself is a mixture of sand, pebble, cobble, boulder. And occasionally you see a bit of uh, sorted by these barriers that we just went by. Coming out to uh, Militia Island and then back again. Gain a view now uh, towards the north of Malagawatch and Pelier Harbor. Uh, we're heading out towards uh, Militia Island and we're just picking up the flanking spit that's actually submerged on the end of Militia Island. And you can see there's some uh, beach development on the inner side with wetland vegetation, but on the whole, this is just a, a lag shoal. A very small island with uh, coarse material along the shore and in the near shore, some pockets of sand. Then as you come around to the spit uh, end of the island, you get a little erosional scar that's probably feeding uh, that depositional feature, which actually may be quite old. Uh, you can see the gravel uh, apron around the island, followed by uh, sand on the slope down in the deeper water. Crossing back over to uh, the main shore, there's fringing uh, beach, uh, and then we go into a very narrow barrier beach. Uh, some trees in the back, but there's a fair bit of evidence of overwash and some dune vegetation. And then coming back on the fringing shore, we get sand deposits offshore, some erosional scarf in the back shore, and heading into Pelier Harbor, we get a set of three well-developed recurves uh, curving from uh, south to north into the harbor. And at the head of the harbor, we've got pretty shallow water, and the top bowl of it joins the mainland to uh, Pelier Island. You can see it's mostly sand, some pebble in the beach, dune grass in the back shore, and there's more sand deposits on this uh, outer part of the uh, head of Pelier Harbor. I get a good view of what looked to be sort of uh, circular deposits of sand and vegetation all along this outer shore. Sheep Island in the background there, uh, and then on the inner side of Pelier Harbor, you've got uh, a sandy foreshore, um, smaller um, sand pocket beaches with dune grass in the back shore. The uh, higher relief areas have an erosional scarp, and between them, you sometimes have a submerged uh, barrier. Uh, this part of the inner harbor has no beach development whatsoever, it's uh, sort of a low scarp. But at the entrance, there's a recurve spit uh, with some erosion on the proximal end. And again, you see that very distinct break between the gravel and the sand that's farther offshore. Coming along uh, Pelier Island, uh, you're switching back into a ro uh, erosional scarp, the free face, and uh, poor developed outer beaches. Going around Sheep Island, and then we'll head down to, to Malagawatch Harbor. Um, as we come into there again, you've got beautifully uh, well-developed uh, barriers connecting these headlands, and um, uh, in some of these places, you're picking up uh, sand in the offshore area. But it's quite a lot of uh, vegetation, sort of grassy uh, material, or um, Algae, I don't know what it is uh, in, the, in the waters offshore. 
And the back shore is partially stabilized scarp. And we're coming across one of the larger barriers by Militia Point. Um, that is um, dune grass in the back shore, very shallow on the inner part. There is an inlet and outlet. You can see some ebb tidal deposits uh, and flood tidal deposits. And then you're into a partially stabilized uh, cliff. Time is uh, 12.20 and uh, we're going into Malgawatch Harbor. Coming up into uh, some organic deposits just up in here. And, well, actually, no, sorry, not organic deposits, but stratified drift. And it was in here where they used to have a they used to have a crossing where they used to tow the, the boats across this this uh, neck to get into Malgawash Harbor and go on to Orangedale. They used to cut across here get over into the other part and then take an old boat canal over to Orangedale. So there used to be a, a connection for the smaller boats through these waterways over to Orangedale from Marble Mountain. So they're going all the way around uh, Militia Point and so on in the outer coast. As we come up to the head, um, this part of the bay. They will circle back out and go up further into Malgawash Harbor. There you're just seeing uh, several of the small barriers facing the opening in, uh, in the Malgawash Harbor. Uh, barriers have developed uh, nice sand uh, beaches uh, derived probably from this uh, mostly from these scarps. Uh, the scarps are about uh, 5 to 10 meters high and there's some, several small recurves all along here. So we come up onto the corner towards Campbell Point and Mountain Watch Harbor. Uh, again, you're picking up uh, in the submerged area a lot of vegetation on the uh, sediment. It's quite sandy. Uh, it's a bit redder, uh, the material now. There's less cobble in the, uh, in the submerged near shore area. And the beaches are less well developed in this upper part. Uh, more vegetated uh, shores. Although occasionally you get a uh, well developed uh, beach. Very narrow though. Uh, quite a bit of uh, shallow water areas. Uh, we've just seen some of it now, the lake colored area. And uh, you can see some uh, of the vegetated uh, wetland in, uh, in behind. As we approach the settlement of Big Harbor Center, you can see there's sand deposits offshore, very shallow water, and discontinuous fringing beach. Some of it has dune grass uh, towards this, at the head with some more vegetated shores. We're up by Big Harbor Center. Um, around that island uh, at the head. Um, it's uh, 1224. At that island, you can see there's quite a submerged uh, shoal that goes across from the main shore. And as we come up to the, um, the head uh, towards uh, an old boat canal, um, used to be about four feet deep they used to have going up through here and uh, you see some old uh, see um, so probably oyster traps this may well be the blue uh, blue water uh, oyster uh, cages see the oyster cages just in the foreground there and there you can see the old canal that used to be cut through Old boat canal used to be cut through. It's about a thousand feet long, about four feet deep. The, the old boats used to take through in the 1800s. Uh, just 
just uh, cutting across the beach now is uh, sandy, a barrier is cut across the canal as we come across. It's now uh, 1225 and we're going about 80 uh, knots. We'll come across these oyster pods.